So this is my second video in the ophthalmic emergency series and today we're going to talk about retinal detachments. So I want to start off with a little bit of anatomy. Uh, if you see, uh, this is a cross section of the eye and at the back we have the retina and this is a more zoomed in version uh, of the retina. Now what you can't see here is the retinal pigment epithelium that is at the very back of the retina and what it does is that it provides a blood supply to the outer one-third of the cones okay so just the outer portion so if you have detachment um, you basically have no blood supply to these uh, these neurons so let's take a look at the definition so retinal detachment is the separation of the multi-layer neurosensory retina from the RPE now this could happen passively when there's accumulation of fluid between the two layers, which is the retina and the retinal pigment epithelium, or it could happen actively, in, uh, in which case something is actively pulling the retina off, um, which could be the vitreous. Uh, this results in ischemia because the retina is pulled away from the retinal pigment epithelium and uh, there's rapid progressive photoreceptor generation. So basically, without the blood, just like any other part of the body, uh, these uh, these cells, these neurons die. So this is a normal OCT. You can see uh, if you've never seen an OCT before, this is uh, this is the retina right over here. Uh, this is the fovea and this bright lit uh, area. That's the RPE. Now if you look in the second one, it's pulled away. So over here. Uh, and it's, this seems more like an active process. It looks like something is actually pulling the retina away from the retinal pigment epithelium. So what causes it? Uh, it could be regmatogenous, which means there is a break in the retina, uh, or it could be non-regmatogenous, which means that there's no break, but something is separating the two layers. Okay, could be leakage, could be exudates, it could be the vitreous actually pulling on it, not to the extent where there's a break, but still pulling it away from uh, from the RPE. So, regmatogenous are the most common types of uh, retinal detachments. There is a hole or a tear, and that hole basically creates a space behind the retina where fluid could accumulate. So there are two more uh, most common causes for these uh, regmatogenous retinal detachments. The first one is a posterior vitreous detachment. Uh, there's a strong uh, connection between the, the vitreous and, um, and, our, and, the, and the retina. And the vitreous pulls on the, the retina causing there to be a tear. Now fluid goes through this tear behind the retina and causes it to uh, detach from the RPE. You can also have a traumatic retinal detachment in which case you have a tear because of trauma and then fluid again migrates behind the retina and causes uh, the, the development of a retinal detachment. Now there are four things, two are listed on this slide and two are on the subsequent slide, um, for non-regmatogenous retinal detachments which means there's no tear but the retina is still detached from the RPE. Uh, now again, just like we spoke uh, about in the last one, it could be because of traction from the, the vitreous. Now the only difference is in this case, there's no tear. Okay, uh, It's seen in patients with diabetes, vitromacular traction syndrome, retinopathy of prematurity, and sickle cell retinopathy. Um, you can also have an exudative retinal detachment. Basically, there's uh, an exudate that uh, accumulates between uh, behind the retina, and um, it's seen in patients with uh, inflammatory conditions. Lattice degeneration is our next cause for a non-regmatogenous retinal detachment. Um, this is defined by focal retinal thinning in the periphery, where the overlying retina or the overlying vitreous undergoes liquefaction, okay? And um, this is, the, the imaging on this looks, or the, the physical exam on this looks very different. I have some pictures uh, later on. And the last one is a pseudo-retinal detachment, which means it's not really a true retinal detachment, where there's peripheral senile retinoschisis, which means there's splitting of the peripheral retina with an elevated retinal layer. And I have a picture of that as well. So this is lattice degeneration. As you can see, 
uh, this white area here, these speckles here, here, and here. So um, this is usually defined by thinning of the peripheral retina leading to liquefaction of the overlying retina and then at the border of where you have the normal retina and the abnormal retina is where you usually get the detachment. This is the pseudo-retinal detachment. So if you see, uh, the entire retina is not uh, pulled away. It's just some of the layers. So that's why it's called pseudo because uh, we talked about this earlier that the outer one-third of the cones are what's supplied by the RPE. Now since not that part is not pulled away, there's no ischemia. So there's technically no retinal detachment. Risk factors are myopia, cataract surgery, and PVD, posterior vitreous detachment. And uh, if you have a posterior vitreous detachment in one eye, there's about a 90% chance of development in the, in the opposite eye. Presentation, uh, patients usually come in with an increased number of floaters. They'll see flashes of light, a curtain-like shadow over the visual field, and blurred vision. The pathophysiology for the flashes of light is because uh, there's a pulling of the retina uh, that causes mechanical depolarization, uh, which the patients perceive as flashes of light. The diagnosis is made by a slit lamp and a 360 degree scleral depression exam. Uh, in cases where you have a vitreous hemorrhage, you won't be able to see anything on your slit lamp, so you have to get a B scan. Treatment. So for patients who only have a posterior vitreous detachment, so the vitreous undergoes liquefaction and collapses, but there's no retinal detachment. It's just the vitreous that is liquefied and that is detached from the retina. You actually don't have to do anything. However, if they have worsening flashes, more floaters, uh, with loss of peripheral vision, then you start to think, okay, maybe there is a retinal detachment with it and you have to you have to reevaluate these patients. In patients that have a retinal hole or a tear without a detachment, you do laser or cryotherapy. So you either burn it into place or you cool it or freeze it into place. Patients that have a regmatogenous retinal detachment, meaning they have a retinal detachment with a tear, uh, if it's small, you can again go with laser or cryotherapy but if it happens to be large, then you have to do rheumatic, uh, pneumatic uh, retinopexy, temporary peribulbar balloon, scleral buckle, or a vitrectomy. And we'll talk about these, uh, these treatments in just a second. So pneumatic retinopex uh, retinopexy is an outpatient patient procedure. Uh, you do cryotherapy uh, followed by a, ga a gas bubble. Okay, and it's used for superior retinal breaks, which makes sense that when you inject air into uh, a space like the vitreous, the air rises up, and it basically pushes the retina against the RPE. Now, you can also use it for inferior breaks, but then the patient has to be sort of uh, leaning forward uh, with the head down for about six to eight hours, which could be uncomfortable. The success rate is about 70 to 80 percent. Uh, the next treatment could be, you could use scleral buckling. Uh, you make an indentation in the wall and you sort of, it's like a belt that goes around uh, the globe and push it closer to the, the detached retina. Uh, now there are no differences in outcomes in patients assigned uh, to have pneumatic retinopexy or scleral buckling and this is not an outpatient procedure. So you could basically go with uh, uh, pneumatic retinopexy for a superior uh, retinal break, but if it's anywhere else, then you kind of have to go with sclerobuckle because um, pneumatic retinopexy won't really work for like uh, um, anything except for superior and inferior. And the success rate is a little bit higher, but I guess not st uh, not statistically significant, about 80 to 90 percent. So this is uh, this is uh, just an image of a scleral buckle. So you can see it's like a belt that goes around it, and there's a detachment right over here and you just push the sclera closer and it just attaches back. Uh, last one is a vitrectomy. You could uh, uh, just take out the vitreous that has this strong connection with the retina and it's pulling it off. And the success rate is slightly higher, uh, about 80 to 90 percent compared to uh, pneumatic retinopexy. 
and the prognosis is unfortunately uh, limited. Uh, this is an emergency, not like something that you have to take care of right away, but um, after 12 hours, um, there is retinal degeneration. So you'd like to get to it as soon as possible. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you.